listening to Chemical Conversations with George and Meredith Schaefer, founders of STORM, Strategic Treatment Options and Recovery Ministries. There is no chemical solution to a spiritual problem. Well, hey, welcome to Chemical Conversations here on Crossover Radio. Um, If you are watching live, you're probably noticing that we're missing somebody. The good-looking one. um, uh, no, I mean, we'll get to your beauty okay, right, here, right. just here in a minute. All right. um, so uh, Meredith actually had car trouble. Um, we are running back and forth doing our thing, and uh, she had some car trouble. So she um, she's not here yet. And depending on what time she gets picked up, she might not be. She might be the smart one, though. <laughs> right? She might be the smart one. Yeah, there's no culpability if you're not there, right? <laughs> So on our show today, let's get into the beauty and the majesty of the man sitting to my right. Um, Brian Anderson is a retired major from the United States Army, um, one of my close personal friends, one of my personal heroes. He is a the program director at Rob's Ranch, but he's also newly started uh, about a month ago. Is that right? Uh, month and a half? Yeah, about a month and a half. month and a half. He is the host of Surrender to Win right here on Crossover Radio on Fridays from... Five uh, Fridays from twelve thirty Central Time to one thirty. You went to the hour. Yeah, I went to the hour. How how's that going? Pretty good. Yeah, it is a little tough, you know, because I'm right now. Because you're by yourself, myself. right? So I, I've never been accused of not being able to talk. <laughs> But I have found that sitting on a radio show, talking for an hour by yourself, it's a little challenging. It's super challenging because there's nothing to bounce. Like, you can't bounce anything off. I don't have anyone looking at me going, oh, that was stupid. Like, that was really bad. Like, don't do that again. But uh, I'm having a blast. But, I mean, you have free creative rights. (sighs) That's not going to be a good thing either, man. (laughs) (laughs) That may not be good. Uh, So, me and Brian have some shared experiences. Um... Not simultaneously or together, but we're both veterans from the Army. Uh, We both have our personal struggles, uh, continue to have our personal struggles. Um, But he he is making a huge difference. If you are unaware of Rob's Ranch, it is, this is how I describe it, it is the platinum standard of men's recovery. It's a faith-based treatment facility in Purcell, Oklahoma, just run by incredible, incredible people with an incredible passion and heart for to see men have their lives restored. Um, it, it, I tell people, like, I've considered relapse just so I can go. Like that. Just come visit, man. <laughs> just, it might be, it easy. might be easier yeah, just, on uh, all around. Come visit every day. Every day. <laughs> yeah, don't, you don't have to do that. I do have a, a standing invitation to come for lunch Anytime. and come hang out. Absolutely. Um, but I, I try not to take advantage of that because the food there also. Yeah, I used to be I mean, like wow. 115 pounds. <laughs> yeah, now I'm 215. I'm trying to get into that fitness again, man. I don't know if I, my body could handle man, that I, level you know, of culinary when expertise. When I retired after 22 years of the Army, I, I, I was like, you know, I'm going to stay in shape. And, oh, and, yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah. That, that first day when I was on terminal leave, I right. looked at the clock and I said, nope. nope. And, <laughs> I haven't done it since. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, oh, after, man. After 22 years of getting up at old dark 30, I was oh, like, I'm done. I'm right. Done. I mean, you know, you, you know what I've found is I really enjoy working out now when it's not required of me. Yeah, well, I don't know if I've – I don't think I've gotten there yet. I mean, <laughs> I, well – I don't know if I would really say enjoy. What I mean is, <laughs> you know, in the Army – I don't know. Maybe there are some people out there that truly enjoyed it. I, there was nothing about getting up that early in the morning no. that I enjoyed. No. Or in December or January when it's freezing cold, Man, snow right. and ice. There was yes. nothing I enjoyed about it. Right. And it was always, I told my wife, Cindy, I said, you know, we did PT until you puked. Right. Every day. Right. And if you didn't puke, you weren't training You weren't hard trying enough. hard enough. You weren't trying hard enough. Right. So it literally destroyed any enjoyment out of it. <laughs> So now when I do work out or do any type of gym stuff here on my own after I retired, right. if I don't puke, I feel like I haven't worked <laughs> out hard enough. Because you've been, you've been programmed. You've been, I have been brainwashed into thinking. Pavlo's dog, man. Ring the, ring the bell and start salivating. <laughs> I, you know, if I don't vomit after I've been working out, I didn't do it hard enough. Right. 
completely right. right. Thanks, Army. And then, and then I injure myself, so I can't work out for another week, and it's this destructive cycle of – it's just a, a state of perpetual I suck. Yeah. I, well, you know, and I came off some pretty significant injuries when I retired, and, and you know, on the, on the realistic standpoint of view, I can't move like I used to. I, right. You know, I had some – some significant spine injuries and I uh, was paralyzed for a short period of time and was in a wheelchair and had to learn how to walk again. And so I, I never regained my full use of my legs. In fact, I feel horrible about this, but Saturday I was cleaning my garage out, which that's fun. Oh, the best. The, the spring the clean best. out. And um, one of my dogs took after this lady that was walking her dog. Oh, snap. And so I went to try and <laughs> run to go get my dog and right. I face planted as hard as you could because my legs won't move like wow. they used to. So, you know, the, the spirit was willing, yeah. but the body was The flesh was weak. <laughs> and I mean, I hit the ground hard Yeah, and I just, I, I can't run. I, right. You know, I think that's my biggest fear is if I catch on fire, I'm doomed. <laughs> you know, I, Stop, I, drop, I, and roll. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> There's no running, I guess. Yeah. So, uh, you know, my, my version of, of working out uh, nowadays is, is way, way, way different than when we were in the army. Yeah. So I can't run anymore. Um, right. Which it's been several years since I've been able to run, um, which is a little different. Sure. Uh, sure. Do you but, miss it? Do you miss running? Um, not the those long miserable runs we used to do. Oh, right. But Seriously. remember the slow like cadence runs. We oh used to do? man, yes, on you Fridays. Just go like ten yeah. miles and not even feel like you ran. Right. I, I miss those. Yeah. Those were a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, but the hey, let's run till you vomit, and then we'll run some more. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't miss those. That so was long. that was unnecessary. So uh, since since I've gotten out uh, over the past few months, I've been trying to work out my cardio. I'm swimming. I'm doing elliptical. And now I'm just recently starting to get back into running again, I'm, and I'm remembering why it was that I stopped to begin with, because it's awful. I was, <laughs> I was cleaning out my garage, putting boxes up in the attic, walking up and down the attic stairs. Well, I wasn't walking all the way up. My daughter was up at the top helping me. I was right. walking up like three stairs. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. And after about uh, four or five boxes, I, was, I had to take a knee <laughs> okay. and drink some water. <laughs> drink water. <laughs> It's like this is pathetic, right? Isn't it? I am, isn't it? I'm a miserable I used to be an apex predator, and yeah, you know, now no. I break a sweat walking out to my car. When you start breathing heavy to bend over and tie your shoes, right? Right, entirely wrong. No, I tell you, it's it, when you hit a whole new level, when it gets very difficult to reach the shoelaces, yeah. That you know, uh, trimming my toenails has become an, uh, an Olympic event for me, yeah, it you was, know. Or I'll look at doing something, and if it requires me bending over, like, well, I guess I'm not doing that. <laughs> right. You know, even if it's eating, it's like, well, I guess I'm not doing that. Right. I drop something on the ground, and I really have to consider how badly do I want that. Yeah. No. Nope. I'm like, uh, there's no more five seconds because it'd take me half an hour just to get down there. <laughs> Another half hour to get back yeah, up. So it's real. I let it go. Let it go. Let it go. So, you know, something that I that I really struggled with. When I got out of the military what, and into my life, into my new life of recovery, was my identity. Absolutely. And what was interesting was about a year, year and a half prior to that, I was in church and I felt like God was telling me, hey, you need to prepare yourself because what you wear is not who you are. And I and and that came to me as a huge revelation because God and I didn't have a massive like a, a really intimate relationship at the time. So when He laid that on my heart, I was like, "Wow, that's 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 revelatory." Like, you know how um um how how is it? I might have to get you a little bit closer, like eating it, like eating it. Um, I had that revelation and. I thought I had been preparing myself. I didn't know what was to come. I had no idea, like, the, the sheer gravity of the situation that we were getting ready to go through. And then it hit, and I was completely at a loss. I, 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 didn't, know, I didn't know who I was outside of the uniform. I didn't know who I was without drugs and alcohol. And removing those two things, I feel like, 
as I reflect back, and I, I reflect back rather often, I think that was part of the the situation that we had to endure to include agoraphobia. Like, I didn't know who I was. I didn't know how to operate in this strange new world with these baby coping mechanisms outside of a uniform. Um, I, I wore I wore T-shirts that told everybody I was a veteran. My mm. car was decked out in veteran stuff. Uh, but that it just wasn't enough. Like yeah. the, the veteran status wasn't enough. Did you, did you go through that at all? Uh, to the T, okay. to the absolute T I okay. went through it. Um, you know, I enlisted when I was 19. Me too. And, uh, you know, first it was into the army national guard. And I, I mean, I quickly realized I love the army. Yeah. Uh, it gave me an identity. Yeah. It gave me a purpose. Yes. It, it it made me unique, right. at least in my mind. I thought of you know I was unique from the rest of, of of the world. So I loved it, and so I decided to make a career out of it. Um, so all I had known, you know, I when I um, when I finally medically retired out at uh, forty one, all I'd known my whole adult life was was the army. Right. I, I didn't even have to worry about picking clothes out because I had a uniform to wear every day. Right. Right. I, I think I had the same T-shirt and shorts for 15 years because only warm once or so, right. you know, maybe four times a month or it's, something. It's the same outfit you would mow your lawn and yeah, go out in. Exactly. <laughs> so when I, uh, you know, when I finally retired, I, I, I had that moment where I was driving away and looking at the military post in my rearview mirror after I just signed out on on my terminal leave. Right. Going, man, this is the greatest day ever. I'm finally right. free. Right. And within probably two weeks, I was completely and totally lost. Wow. I I, I didn't know who I was. I I had no idea how to assimilate back into civilian life. I right. couldn't even speak civilian ease. Right. right. Uh, everybody made me angry. Everybody. Everybody made me angry, wow. irritated. All I wanted to do was go back. Right. I remember sitting there on the computer trying to find contractor jobs. Did you really? Yeah. To, wow. to That I could go back to the Middle East. Because oh, Oconus. The, okay. Yeah, Oconus. I wanted to go back to the Middle East because at least that that made sense to me. Right. You know, that chaos and that death and destruction and all that stuff, it, although it was miserable, it made sense to me. It did. I could operate in that world. Yeah. Uh, but I was too busted up. Physically, uh, you know, it's kind of hard for a, a contractor who can't really walk <laughs> very good to get a job. I think, I think Blackwater might frown on that. Yeah. I don't. I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know that that's when my alcohol use really increased as well. I, yeah. I was completely lost. No identity. No idea what I wanted to do in life. I, I, I felt like my life, the best years of my life were, were done. Right. And right. I had no idea what to do. Right. Um, I was emotionally hurting from, you know, some of the stuff that, you know, we went through and endured uh, on our deployments. Right. I was physically hurt, uh, having to deal with the loss of being able to fully use my, you know, my Legs like I'd used to been able to in the, so I was just completely lost. Um, and I, 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 I didn't know where to fit in. So I tried to hang out with the veteran community and right. it was just an angry community. Right. Not everybody, but the, Most. Ones, the ones that I was hanging out with, Most. it was an angry community. Sure. And, and we, we, all we did was sit around and complain about how miserable, uh, civilian life is right. and how great it was, you know, back in the day. Right. Right. And I mean, I was lost. Yeah. I was absolutely lost. And truly by the grace of God, my, my alcohol consumption and, and pain medication abuse and all that brought me to my knees. Praise God, man. Um, you know, today I look at it as the best thing. One of the best things that's ever happened to me on this earth. Yes. Yes. Was that I got hit with substance abuse, man. Amen. Because, uh, it brought me to my knees. And that's what we needed. Yeah. That's what we needed. I've got an interesting turn for this conversation, I think. Mm -mm. Oh, no. Let's go to commercial break real quick. Uh, this is George Schaefer and Brian Anderson here on Chemical Conversations on Crossover Radio, and we will be right back. 
Ah, do you hear that? That means the start of a good day in my household. If I don't have that first cup to begin my morning, then I'm guaranteed my day is going to be a struggle. And nobody makes better coffee than Grounds for Compassion Coffee. It's coffee with conviction. So head on over to their website, g4c.coffee. That's g, the number 4, c, dot coffee. Or give them a call at 405-603-1902 to get your own cup A Get Up and Go. My name is George Schaefer. And I'm Meredith Schaefer. Together we are founders of STORM, Strategic Treatment Options and Recovery Ministries. And we provide an individualized blueprint of recovery for both the addict and their family members, regardless of the situation in which they find themselves. And starting in March 2019, we are opening up a sober living home for men called the Storm Shelter. For more information, please visit our website at www.storminc.org. Or you can call our office line, 405-503-7442. Join us in fighting for the eradication of the epidemic of addiction. Are you a small business looking to enter the advertising market without breaking your budget? Well, I've got the solution to your problem. Crossover Radio. We are an internet radio station with worldwide reaching possibility, but locally embedded in the Bethany and Warwickers area in Oklahoma. We have competitive advertising packages to help you reach new customers and grow your business. If you're a well-established business, we're here for you as well. We're able to handle all the advertising needs your business requires. We're also launching a crossover radio sports station in May of 2019 that will cover pro, high school sports, and everything in between, doubling your reach and advertising capabilities. To partner with Crossover Radio and grow your business, please contact us at contact at thecrossoveronline.com or by phone at 405 494 O two three four, crossover radio, radio with a purpose. All right, we're back. Uh, before the commercial break, uh, our guest Brian Anderson, program director at Rob's Ranch and host right here on Crossover Radio of Surrender to Win. Surrender to Win. Surrender right to an Win. What oxymoron, right? Man. But it's, but and and that's what we're getting ready to talk about. Like we were just talking about our identity in the military and how difficult it was when we processed out. And you were telling us about how when you left the gates, you looked in the rearview mirror and thought this is the greatest day of my life. And then we just didn't know where to go, what to do, how to operate. We didn't speak the language. We didn't speak the language of the natives. Um, and but right before we went to break, you said something so powerful, and that was. Uh, man, I'm grateful that I was brought to my knees by drugs and alcohol. Man, w- would you just continue on and man, take as much time? Like that is that's so powerful and it's so true. Well, um, I you know I obviously I didn't see it that way at first. I I just thought when I finally went to treatment and uh, you know for full disclosure, I, I'm an alumni of Rob's Ranch. I I went through there in 2014 and. Uh, you know, I just thought I was going there because I needed to learn how to not drink as much. Right. <laughs> yeah, there, that was a that uh, was an eye opener. Right. Um, and the cool thing about it was, is I, um, you know, we only talked about ten or fifteen percent of the time I was there at the ranch. We only talked about ten or fifteen percent of the time about drugs and alcohol. The rest was all that stuff inside. Right. So, you know, when I retired. And I had no identity. I didn't know who I was. I I just remember every day waking up thinking, well, maybe today will be better. Right. Maybe maybe today uh, I'll catch a break and I'll be able to find what that is that's going to make me happy. And I thought it was a a different job. I thought it was another title. I thought it was whatever. Right. That uh, maybe that'll be it. Right. And nothing ever worked. And so... Having a, a you know problem with drinking too much, wh- what that did for me was is it caused me to finally have to make a decision: Do I want to keep living my life this way, or do I want to do something different? Right. And so I was blessed with having been, but uh, by being hit with something so painful that it caused me to have to make a decision on whether I was going to do something to change my life. 
And so while I was going through uh, treatment there, uh, I had to get honest. Ooh. And not just honest like, oh, I don't like, you know, kale. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who does? Yeah. I mean. I had to get real honest. Right. Honest with myself and honest with uh, everything. And so that was tough as well because a lot of things that I'd been denying myself, denying about myself, um, I had to come to terms with. Right. Something as simple as, you know, George, whenever we were over in the Middle East, I was scared. Sure. Yeah, plenty of times. And having been in command of other soldiers during combat operations and stuff, I, I never admitted that I was scared. Right. I always held that in, and then I thought, well, if I say that I'm scared, then there's something wrong with me. I'm weak. Right. Uh, people are going to look at me different. And so I had, I had to just start off with saying, you know what? I was scared. I didn't want to die. <laughs> what? Oh, yeah, I know. It's crazy. <laughs> so through that process, uh, I learned a lot about myself, and I learned about being fake and phony and trying to project an image and trying to impress people right. and trying to always gain people's acceptance and their approval, and I'd spent a lifetime that way. And, and that was even before I joined the military. Yeah. I lived a life that way. Right. So the gift of that desperation of, of being hit in the face with enough emotional pain and the possibility of losing my wife and my children uh, was a gift that, re that allowed me to do something different. And ultimately, it uh, brought me to finally, truly know Christ. I mean, I'd said I was a Christian for sure and name for years and years and years. Right. Oh yeah. You know, I believe in Jesus. I believe in God, but I still run, I still live in life on my own terms. Right. I was the one in charge. Right. I was the one sitting on the chair. Okay. And if things got bad enough, I'd say, Hey God, you know, help me out. And right. It helped me out. Sure. And then I'd say, okay, thanks. I got it. I got it from here. I got it. Thanks. Yeah. And I learned what true surrender was and what true faith was. And for me, that was understanding that I'm not God and I'm not in control of anything in this world. I don't want to be in control of anything in this world. And then faith is just understanding that whatever happens, uh, if I trust God, one way or the other, it will turn out for the best. Yes. Maybe not right then, maybe not today or tomorrow but right in the end right and maybe not the way i, I want it's gonna right go down and i was told one time somebody said hey brian you know you know what the difference between you and god is i said no entertain me why what right and i said well the difference is is god never tries to play you <laughs> <laughs> it's like okay well that that kind of hurt. <laughs> right. He doesn't? Yeah, that kind of hurt. Wow. Man, that's so good. And the, um, man, just, just the recognition of coming to terms with where we've been and what we've been through and what was brought out of it. Well, a lot of times around here, and we started saying this a couple years ago, um, in Isaiah 61, it says, um, You know, you can get you get beauty from ashes, right? And and we we love that verse, and it's really encouraging. I mean, I don't ever want to go back through the stuff I went through. Oh no, <laughs> no, no, no! And I live my life every day in an effort to definitely not yeah, do that. I don't ever want to go back to that. No, but, but there's not enough money in the world to get me to trade trade it today. Well, not it, for where I'm at today. And I don't know about you, but I'm an experiential learner. Uh, like I, I, I've, yeah. I've read my whole life about tragedy and people coming back from it. I'm like, man, that's so cool. That's so inspirational. Um, but it didn't lead me to change my life. No, I'm the, I'm the guy that literally, you know, mom and dad would say, don't touch the stove. It's hot. Right. I needed to know how I, hot. Yeah. I'd be like, okay, I know they said it was hot, 
But maybe their definition of hot and my definition is different. Right. So I touch the stove. Nope, it's hot. No, it's <laughs> way hotter than it's I hot, thought. It's hot, but now I know. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah, Experiential exactly learners. Learning. Experiential learners. Well, you know, there's a couple pivotal moments in my life that I can I can point my finger to and go, you know, this is this was a life changing moment. The 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 first one was my life changing moment for Christ. And that was um you know, at the ranch we have Pastor Steve right out there who comes right. and he's the one that uh, provides our chapel services in the morning. And he's a Pentecostal. Right. Minister, preacher. Right. And and I get I get out the ranch. I'd never been to a Pentecostal church. I even wasn't quite sure. I don't sure think what I have I, either. I knew what knew what a Pentecostal church was. Do they really pass snakes? Is that is that his true? His doesn't. Okay. His doesn't. Right on. So <clears throat> I decided to go to his church on Sundays just because it was really small and I figured, well, I won't run into somebody I know. There you go. Because I was too worried about what people would think about me. So I get there and of course, Pastor Steve being the great man he is, he, he puts me on the front row (laughs) and he reserves the whole front row for guys coming from the ranch. So I'm standing there and I look over to my left and there's a guy and he's got this leather case. And I'm like, well, that's a, it's a round case. I'm like, that's kind of an interesting case for a Bible. And he unzips it and a tambourine comes out. Oh, snap. Yeah, it's one of those. So we got the tambourine going, and I'm standing there going, what on earth is going on? (laughs) And that was my introduction to Pentecostal Church. Fantastic. And so at the end of the service, Pastor Steve asks everybody who wants to come up to the front to to come up and pray. And, well, of course, his entire congregation of 70-some people all go up there. And I'm sitting in the, the pew there going, well, I better get up there so right. I don't look like you know the spawn, man out. the spawn of Satan sitting, right. <laughs> sitting in there. So I get up there. feels uncomfortable. I'm, I'm, it's miserable. I hate it. We get done. He's taking us back to the, to the ranch. And I was like, man, I'm, I'm messed. I'm, I'm, I'm hosed. I have to go back next weekend or he's going to think I didn't like it. Yes. And I didn't like it. Right. <laughs> that fear of what people think about me was so right. overwhelming right so i go back the next weekend same experience and he's driving me back and, and i go well i'm committed now right i've been twice that's pretty much you know i have to go now you basically filled out the membership form yeah i don't want him to be angry at me right true so i don't know somewhere around fifth or sixth time i went uh i finally go up to the you know i go up to the front of the altar and i'm on my knees and out of nowhere i just broke down and started bawling Wow. And I didn't say anything else but, God, I'm sorry. Wow. That's all I said was, God, I'm sorry. Wow. I just kept saying it over and over as I just bawled. And that was, to me, the moment where I first started to understand surrender. Okay. Okay. Now, I'd like to tell you that from that moment, the heavens opened up and the angels sang, and I saw them. Maybe they did, but I didn't see them. <laughs> right. Um, I'm sure they did. But that moment is when I can truly say my life started to change. Wow. And I've had many moments like that ever since there. And then the, the next moment that changed the direction of my life, I was going to the VA hospital for something. That'll change your life. Yeah. Anytime you go to the VA, that'll so change your life. I'm walking down the ground floor, the the, the long hallway there. And for anyone that's mm-hmm. been to the VA, you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about, about. yep. And everywhere there's veterans sitting around. They've got their hats on, yep. their shirts, and they're all talking about the good old days. Right. And, and how much they dislike this, you know, the civilians. They don't understand and politicians. Mm-hmm. And, and it was just misery. Right. Just, it's miserable just, there. Just there's a happy. there's a there's a cloud of misery misery over that uh, over that location. And so as I'm walking in the hall, I, I said to myself, "No, I will not do that. I will not become that dysfunctional, disgruntled veteran." Right. I won't do it. Yeah. Uh, I there's so much more in life than that. So much more. And so I I came to the understanding that the military, I loved every bit of it, uh, especially loved every soldier I ever got to serve with or command. I wouldn't trade it for the world. Uh, it, it means so much to me in my heart. 
But that part of my life is over. Right. Chapter's you know, closed. Just as the Bible says, you know, there's a there's a season for everything. Right. And that season's over. Right. And I wanted to live. So, you know, those were two very monumental points in my life, you know, little check marks, if you will, on my right. on my timeline of life. Right. That my life that my life changed. Man, that's fantastic. Um I know what you're talking about. I know the I know the hallway that you're referring to. I know the feeling. Um, I know the feeling that I get when I pull on to that to that installation to that site at the Oklahoma City VA. Um, I do I do feel like they are doing everything that they can. I agree. I do. I think you know I hear people talk bad about the VA all the time, and I've never had a bad experience as far as the care I get. The people there who are trying to provide care uh, for me and the other veterans, at least from my personal experience, man, they're doing the best they can. Right. With a system that is so overwhelmed. Oh, my gosh. Uh, so and, overwhelmed. And so I, I've even told um, my family, I said, man, I'm just grateful that I have the opportunity to go to a place like the VA. Right. Uh, it may not be as efficient as I'd like. It may not be... Oh, I, 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 I walk in and 30 minutes later I get to walk out, but I at least have a place to go. I mean, you know, you and I have been to places around the world where yeah. that doesn't exist, period. Right. Period. Right. And there is no going into a hospital. You, you get sick, you die. Right. That's absolutely right. Um, man, and I wish, unfortunately, it's an, ex, it's an experiential journey and, when I was in that season of despair and hopelessness with my uh, army veteran hat, shirt, pants, socks, shoes, <laughs> car, walking stick. Don't um, forget the operator uh, sunglasses. The, and... <laughs> I tried to post that picture of you yesterday, <laughs> uh, but for some reason it didn't work. The regular forces shirt. Yeah. <laughs> Yep, I'm nobody special. I, I love that. I'm just, <laughs> just a regular guy, man. I'm you know, just I a never, regular you dude. Know, I, I can't. I, do you know how many SEALs and Special Forces and Rangers I've run into? All of them. There's all of them. I've, I've never <laughs> met a guy that just said, bro, I was a cook. Yeah. You yeah, know? with pride. Yeah. And who did I love the most? The cook. The cook. And the medics. Oh, the yeah. Medics and the cooks. Yes. They had IVs when I was hungover. Yeah. Oh, you did that too? <laughs> Wait a minute. I thought I was the only one. Combat thought, lifesaver course. Man, Woo! right? Yes. I could do it to myself if I yeah. wanted to. Yeah. Man, this is a really awesome discussion. I have been just listening. Um, I'm finally here. <laughs> I know we got to go to commercial break right now. Um, but when we come back, there's so much to talk about with surrendering. You guys may have already covered it, but no, we just I've, I've purely got, purely backstory. I've got we some haven't. stuff going on up yeah. here. I would love to address yes. that when There's we come back. So much room for activities. Perfect. So much room for activities. Perfect. And, and from what I understand, um, as of yet, there's not a show on after us. So Jeremy gave us the thumbs up last time if we had to go. Anyways, <laughs> we should not. We That's I know we, we need we need to respect <laughs> and, uh, and be good stewards of what we've been given. We're very grateful, uh, Crossover Radio, for this opportunity. Uh, Jeremy Coleman, Nathan Mund, you guys are rock stars in our books. Uh, we're going to go to commercial break, and we'll be right back. Hey, this is Big Nate, Program Director here at Crossover Radio, and I just wanted to let you know that Crossover Radio is now the flagship station for Bethany Bronco Athletics. Sponsorships will be filling up fast. So to join in and promote your business, contact the station by phone or by text at 405-494-0234 for more information. And go Broncos! Hey, this is Coach Coleman, and I'm the play-by-play -play voice for your Bethany Broncos. I know there's a lot of guys out there who are trying to kick that nasty tobacco dipping habit, and I know most guys need a little energy boost to try to get them through a long day. And I'm here to give you a solution for both. Grinds Coffee Pouches. Grinds are coffee-filled pouches infused with your favorite flavors, 
such as wintergreen, mint, vanilla, and many more. All of the ingredients and grinds are 100% safe for consumption and will add a pep to your step. So head on over to GetGrinds.com and use our promo code CMI15 to get 15% off your order today. Again, that's GetGrinds.com and use the promo code CMI15 to get 15% off of your order. It's time to rise and grinds with Grinds today. Ah, do you hear that? That means the start of a good day in my household. If I don't have that first cup to begin my morning, then I'm guaranteed my day is going to be a struggle. And nobody makes better coffee than Grounds for Compassion Coffee. It's coffee with conviction. So head on over to their website, g4c.coffee. That's g, the number 4, c, dot coffee. Or give them a call at 405-603-1902 to get your own cup of Get Up and Go. All right, we're back now. Now, the trio is set. Meredith Shea from My Lovely Bride is in studio Woo-hoo. after some unexpected <laughs> vehicular <laughs> concerns. Man, it's been a Monday. Failures. Can I just... Evidently, you did not PMCS your vehicle on Monday morning like you're supposed to. If I knew what PMCS out. meant. Preventative maintenance checks and services. Mm. That's the very first thing that the Army does when they wake, right after PT, of course. Mm. Uh, we all go to the motor pool, and we go through the whole vehicle front, back, bottom, to top and back down. You clearly did not. Um, she didn't have some, her. She didn't have her fifty nine eighty eight echo. She didn't get it the fifty nine eighty eight echo. And no, it is, it is command maintenance Monday. And now she needs a now she needs a forty eight fifty six echo. Mm-hmm. I'm going to fifty seven twenty five both of you here in just a second. You yeah. just made that up. Our <laughs> stuff is real. Yeah. Next How time, do I know? Next time I don't know if it you is. need to get an exhaust sample and bring it to the motor yeah. sergeant <laughs> asap. Absolutely. And. I'll, when you're done with that, go find you a box of grid squares and a prick E7 to take it to. That's right. Well, and here's you know, what you, you was would, going on this morning. I had to deal, instead of P- M- PMCS. PMCSing my vehicle, I was dealing with a peeps emergency because our younger two children ate the peeps from the 11 year old's Boston Massacre Peeps project. I saw that picture. Right. That was yeah. Epic. <laughs> Right. Oh, it was like that was epic. World War Three, but it's so funny because really, like he could have it's gone to school now. today, and he could have said, "My dog my, didn't eat my homework. My, my brother, brother and sister, sister ate my homework." And it had been real, and it was for real. I know. So, fortunately, peeps are on sale the day after Easter. Um, so I've already nice. got some replacement peeps. We're hopefully good to go. But that's what I was doing instead of. PCS Emmy. P M P M C S. P M C S. Preventative maintenance checks and services. Yeah, I'm sorry, I could not do that. 5988. I haven't heard 5988 in years. 5988 Echo. Wow. With the dash 10. Did you in the dash 10 manual, right? So, um, you know what's funny about Storm is every employee that comes through, their initial counseling is on a 4856 Echo. Really? (laughs) That's all I know, dude. That is so (laughs) awesome. It's. that is so uh, awesome. What is the purpose for this initial counseling? It's initial <laughs> Duties counseling. responsibilities. <laughs> you should actually Aww. you should bring the NCOER back. Oh, that would be the best. Yeah, exactly. Do your do your employee evaluations on the NCOER. Done. Sold. <laughs> like, like we've got free software <laughs> like that we're familiar with. Exactly. Oh my gosh. Like, let's just make it happen. I mean, sm- All right, let's work let's smarter. Bring this Not back harder. around to something non well. Yeah, it's still military. I think uh, I'm just going to be military the rest of the show. Perfect. Um, Do I have to be also? Because I don't have any ACUs. Man, you use that acronym correctly, but I unfortunately, know. they've switched over to the ASUs now. Well, dang it. I can't keep up with this. That's not the Arizona State University no. Sun Devils either. It's a Sun Devil hat. It is. Aww. With our rank. Mm-hmm. You guys were talking about surrendering right before we went to the break. And I just got to tell you, that goes so in line with something that God gave me today. All right, so I don't know if you guys have already addressed this, but... Because the 11-year-old surrendered the peeps? No, this isn't even about peeps right now. This is about um, just how the Schaefers have surrendered our will to God's way. And just about a week ago, he told us, uh, hey, I really want you guys to move. Oh, my God. (laughs) 
and we were like, Jesus, no, thank no. you. We're already running a ministry, and we got all these kids. Don't you know we're kind of up like max capacity here? It's like, and it, it was like, wasn't it like three days after we opened Sober Living? Like we were yes. like, finally, we're going to take a breath. Yes. Um, however, we said, okay, you know, if this is really what you want, you're going to have to open up every you're single gonna have to open door up because we cannot do this and still maintain our priorities and you know what he big fat did? and ministry. You know what he big fat did? <laughs> he he just open. big fat opened them. Blew yeah, them yeah. open. Blew them open. Like every single thing that had to happen has happened. And so now, nine days from now, we are, packing. We are moving. Um, and I was doing some yard work over the last... This past weekend, because our yard needs to get in shape. We're selling our house. Um, I have spent a lot of time out in nature, just with God, just nature. <laughs> talking to God. <laughs> the front yard. <laughs> it was. Hey, we live if in the country. If you look at my front yard right now, it looks like the nature. <laughs> that really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Overgrown forest. It's like up to the, halfway up to my shin right now. <laughs> right? Oh, it, it was pretty bad. It looks beautiful now. The kids helped. It's really come together. But yeah. what has happened was I had a lot of time to have a conversation with God. And this morning, man, we got into it because I was like, Lord, why Guthrie? We're moving to Guthrie. This is a beautiful town. I love it. But I know I there's too. a purpose more than just, oh, yeah. Meredith really thinks this is a cool town to live in. Yeah. Um, and he said, because they have a huge meth problem. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, duh. Yeah. Like, we run Storm. And he said, what was George's first drug of choice? Yep. And I was like, oh, my gosh. Yep. Not only are we full circle with going back to um, reach people in addiction, but he, he showed me, like, we're going back to this town. We're going to live there, and we're going to be pulling people out of addiction that – they are addicted to the same thing that started George down his path of addiction. And you cannot really get more full circle than mm -hmm. that. That just, I had a moment, like I was listening to worship music. I was just absorbing all of his goodness. And he was like, there's so much more for you all to do. And it's going to start there. Yeah. Like you are just getting started. And man, that just made me excited. Like yeah. I hate moving. I hate packing. Oh. I hate all this stuff. Oh, but the process. it's so worth it because he has something specific and special for us to do there. And there's a reason that our family is getting called into the middle of a place that is this wonderful, beautiful small town. Um, the community of Guthrie is oh. amazing. We have yes. had just the best interactions with them. Yes. Um but they are in the middle of a meth epidemic and they need some help. And yeah. while we're not the be all end all answer, no, man, no. we can sure be part of that solution. Yeah. We can start a conversation. God laid that on my heart last week when we were at the at Guthrie high school, we spoke at the assembly. Um, and it's been a hot minute that I've stood in front of uh, a high school, a high school student body. And, um, man, as, as I was, as I was giving my kind of warm up speech to let Meredith come in and and really lay the smack down, um, I just started. Ta I just started <laughs> you talking. You laid about, the smack down. I just started talking about? about crystal meth, and God really reminded me, like, hey, you know, you're. He laid it on my heart, and I've been processing it all weekend. It's so funny that you said that. Um, you know, we 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 consistently talk about um, facing the giant of addiction in the Valley of Elah. But now, after, you know what? God knows what he's doing. Right. Imagine that. So going through a couple decades, a little more than two decades of addiction, uh, being broken, like Brian was talking about, being able to finally come to the point where I look back and say that was one of the best things that happened to me. And then the progression of restoration and just the honor that God would let me. So, if, so if if addiction, if we're looking at addiction as a principality, it is my firm understanding that um, the principality of addiction right now, especially in the United States, is man. That's that's a general officer. That's a general officer. Mm -hmm. um, now to be able to and to be able to do that for almost two years now, man, what an honor! What an honor because I recognize the spirit, even if. Even if I don't see telltale, telltale symptoms of use or misuse or abuse, 
man, my spirit just recognizes the spirit of addiction. And to be able to move to Guthrie, it's kind of, it's, 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 man, it's, it's kind of a cataclysmic, epic, like war hero type movie that we're living out because now I get to face down the captain of crystal meth eye to eye and say, I recognize you. I remember you. I remember the pain that you brought. I remember the effects of uh, the lasting effects of what you have to offer. And God has given us the opportunity to not run from it, but run towards it. That's right. To be able to confront it and knowing full well what we're getting into. Um, I mean, it's such an honor to have a dichotomy of a relationship with a God where I can come to him as my general and say, send me. But at the same time, when necessary, and it's often, I get to just walk into the, walk into the, um, into the throne room and say, Daddy, I need you. Daddy, I need you. To be able to have that dichotomy of relationship with a loving God where... When I, when I need my general, when I need my marching orders, I can walk into the throne room with confidence and say, send me. Where do you want me to go? I want you to go back, and I want you to kick the captain of meth um, square in the teeth. Man, that's an honor. But also the, the dichotomy of the relationship where when I'm struggling, when it's difficult, when life is hard, and, and life is pretty hard right now, um, I get to go throw myself into the loving arms of a father. That's so cool. Do you ever think, George, that, you know, all the time we spent in the military was just training all for the this bigger war? All the time. I mean, I've, I've had thoughts where, um, you know, God has said, hey, Brian, you know, great job. Right. Those 22 years. Yeah, seriously. I'm proud of you, son. Now let's put all that to the real war that's going to wear you out. Because I I love my job today. It's one of the best jobs I've ever had in my life. Uh, it's the best job I've ever had as far as being able to, you know, truly, truly uh, impact the lives of others. Um, but I'm not going to lie. It, it's exhausting. Oh, my god! It gosh. is absolutely Physically, exhausting. Physically, mentally, emotionally, and, and strangely. Yeah. And, you know, I don't have any illusions that, you know, G. Brian... Uh, psychotherapist Brian and program director Rob Drench that I'm going to be able to, you know, to win the battle. Right. Go Joe. I'm just a soldier on the, on the field. Right. Um, right. But it is, it does get tiring. I, I do get worn out. Um, just this, you know, every day seeing the devastation that addiction does to families uh, and does to the individual, uh, you know, we've lost, uh, <sighs> In the past three months, I think mm -hmm. we've lost three yeah. uh, guys who have who have come through the ranch that uh, we all knew that was in inside the recovery community. Right. Uh, you know, um, and it's just a, it's just a really really stark reminder of, of the devastation of this disease, and and this you know addiction knows no uh, no one is exempt. No one is exempt from. You know, a feel great officer in the army to right. a senior non commissioned officer in the army right. to the the youngest private in the army to right. the business exec to the yep. banker to the Come on. politician to to the guy behind the dumpster. Yeah, uh, yeah. it knows no exemption. No, you, no one is too smart for it. No one is is you know too rich for it, uh, too privileged for it. That's right. Uh, or too poor for it. Addiction knows no demographic and man. I can't tell you how many times over the past two years that I've had that thought, like, you know, all of your training, all of your experience, good job on that, but it was leading towards something else. And, you know, I, I in those moments where I need, you know, you, sometimes we got to encourage ourselves, right? So in those moments, you know, I try to remind myself, like, hey, you know, you're perhaps you were creative for a time like this. Perhaps everything that you've done in the past but can i tell you for the for the first time ever and i'm doing everything i can not to break down crying for the first time ever it hit me so i, I was recon when i first went in 
Do you guys remember what type of recon I did? NBC. And what, oh, is, yeah, and, what is, and what is this, what does a C stand for? Nuclear, biological, and C? chemical. Chemical. So I'm sitting here on chemical conversations, talking huh. to another addiction recovery specialist, talking about how possibly maybe um, our history or our training and everything that we've done had prepared us for the battle to which we're facing right now. And I just, for the first time in two and a half years of doing Storm, putting Storm together, finally came to the realization that when I joined the Army, I was a chemical reconnaissance specialist. And what are we doing now? We're going behind en <laughs> enemy lines in Guthrie, Oklahoma, to go do the reconnaissance so that we can report back to the Rob's Ranch, to the Stone Gates, like, hey, this is, what, this is what's going down. This is what we need help with. I'm going to send up an NBC4 report. Don't make me get all Army on you. Um, <laughs> So that hey, we can, I'm not going into so, Mop 4. <laughs> I'm not going into Mop 4. I don't have to because I got the armor of God. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Um, send up the, the, the NBC4 report to determine the level of chemical contamination so that the battlefield leaders can place that on the map overlay in the little yellows to determine whether or not we need to go through it or go around it. My mind is blown right now. Hey, what about this? That's so good. What does Mop stand for? Military? Uh, Mission-oriented mission. protective posture. What if we change it to SOP 4? Spiritual. Spiritual oriented protective posture. The armor of God. Whoa. Mind blown. I'm going into SOP 4. I'm going into SOP 4. There you go. Dude. Trademark. <laughs> <laughs> I know we have to take another commercial break here. Um, I, don't, wait, wait. I, don't, I don't know if we can't. I don't know if we can't because it's, it's too good. 12, Creative, creativeness is going. You know, the, the juices are flowing. Yeah. yeah, the juices are flowing. Perfect. But man, for me That's to. From, so good. How do you go? Because obviously we didn't just start Storm August 1st, but so in the plans and preparations and the, and the consistent time in prayer. Um, and a self encouragement, reminding myself of who I am in Christ, and you know the things that have prepared me for the where I am today. How did I miss that? I, when I first went into ninety nine, it was it was called the fifty four Bravo changed over to seventy four Delta, but a fifty four Bravo was a chemical operations specialist, and I went to Lima Five School, which was recon school. So I was a chemical reconnaissance supervisor. We I mean, you know what it was. I mean, I hate to admit it. You. Ticket officer. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh, right. It no. took, it, but it took that. It took. It took a, a bigger perspective. It took. Um, and that's 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 what I love about the way God works. It's um, what is it? I believe it's mm, Psalms or Proverbs. But it is the it is the glory of God to conceal matters it is the nature of kings um, to reveal them. And that's what we get to do on a daily basis. We get to reveal things. We get to um, find these. Uh, man, just yesterday we celebrated Easter, and often if you're talking about video games, you know they put Easter eggs where you can go find certain things, and that's kind of the revelations that we get to that we get to find every single day in this walk with Christ. Like, yeah, that's a big book. With the Bible, the Bible is a big, big book, right? But and that's what I'm getting ready to speak at, at Rewired this weekend about is Revelation 12:11. God has been taking me through uh, this, this massive adventure as far as Revelation 12, 12:11 uh, is concerned. It's like seven or eight words, but He has just opened my eyes and given me revelation after revelation over it. And that's the beauty and the majesty of this walk with Christ, where we just keep digging in and we keep trying to get closer and closer and closer. And as we do, we get more and more revelations to where you're sitting here on a Monday after Easter, and it finally dawns on you. Um, there's a reason why God equates us to sheep. Mm -hmm. Sheep are the dumbest animals on the planet. So for an officer to have to come by and be like, hey, <laughs> by the way, uh, you were a chemical operations specialist, uh, and you did recon. That's precisely what you're doing now. Oh, Man, yeah. that's so good. Well, and you know, a lot of people say, oh, how long did it take you guys to prepare to do storm? Um, 39 years. Yep. A it, it did. And all of the things like storm is at a level that I could never have imagined at 20 months old. Um, 
but all of the things that George did in the military, all of the things that came before the military right. for him, all of that was preparation. All of the years that I worked for a nonprofit, all of the things that I went through in my history too, all of those things came together in the perfect time and the perfect recipe. And that's only through God's goodness and generosity yeah. to let us use all these things that really the enemy just wanted to tear us down, tear us apart, bankrupt us, foreclose us, do all the terrible things that he could do to us in this world. And only God could take all of that mess and turn it into something like storm. Man. And you know, George, I think the, the scary things is how close were you and I to the enemy winning millimeters moments, yeah, millimeters, millimeters, you know, that's, that's, uh, if that didn't make you stop and think, uh, how far we've come dude, it really has lately. I don't know why. I don't know if it's the season or why I, I you know, I have a new relatively new motto for my life. Yeah. You know, everyone. NCOs you, lead the way. Yeah. Well, I'm not, <laughs> dude, I'm, I'm not dumb. I know, I know who got stuff done. I, I truly do. <laughs> but, uh, what's, what's you motto? know, everybody has, everybody has, uh, maybe they have their own little mantra. My mantra yeah. today is, is, is life is the coolest thing I've ever done. Wow. And there was such wow. a long period of my life. Uh, where I never would have been able to say that. Never. Ever. Because it was miserable. It was miserable. Man, let that be hope to somebody out there who is really struggling, maybe with depression or addiction or issues or financial stuff or relational stuff. Yes. Like, it doesn't always have to be this way. No. And you might, the enemy wants to take you all the way to the end game for him, which is still kill, kill, destroy, destroy, right? But God wants to save you, even maybe if it's millimeters, because you're going to have a testimony that is going to impact and influence other people. And let this just be hope to somebody out there um, listening, maybe now or maybe in the future. There is a purpose for your pain right now. And there is a reason that you are where you are. And maybe you are in the training for the battle of your life. Maybe the battle of your life is on its way Amen. and you're going to be able to go to the front lines and you're going to be able to, to rescue people that are in some of the same places that you have been or are right now. So please, please just um, take some hope in that. God is so good to give us hope through so other good. people's stories. So good. And if he, could, if he could change three people like us three, there's hope for you too. Preach. Br Brian, will you give us some information on your show on Fridays and how people can reach out for your services at Rob's Ranch? Sure. So my show on Crossover Radio is called Surrender to Win, uh, and, and that is something that I learned at the, at the ranch itself. But truly, you know, I had to surrender my life to God in order for me to win at life. And so Surrender yeah. to Win's uh, every Friday from 1230 to 130 uh, on Crossover Radio, and I also uh, upload the recorded podcast of it on my Facebook page of Surrender to Win. Um, and you can also find it on Crossover Radio's uh, Facebook page. Um, and for Rob's Ranch, uh, if there's anybody out there who is struggling with substance abuse uh, or uh, know somebody who's struggling with substance abuse, you know, give us a call at 405-253-3838. You can also find us on the web at Rob's Ranch dot org and also on facebook under rob's ranch uh, and if you just have a question uh, yes just just call us for questions and, yes and if i might say a lot of people don't believe us on the george and we see it and we hear it all the time but every single person that works out at rob's ranch except our our pastor uh, we're all in recovery we've all been where where yes. you're at and so first and foremost, we do what we do out at Rob's Ranch, not for money, not for anything. We're a nonprofit organization. We truly do what we do because if we can help one person, one That's more right. person, uh, not have to live in the misery uh, that we've all lived in. Yes. Uh, Dick Liddell, who's the, who's the founder uh, of Rob's Ranch, he lost his son to addiction. But Dick Liddell once said, or he actually he said it more than once, we said, look, I don't even care if uh, we can't get somebody sober. 
which is kind of odd if you're right. thinking about it being a treatment center. Right. But he says, I don't care if we get one person sober. If we can help them find Christ. That's it. Then that's all that matters. That's right. And he's right. That's Amen. right. When I take my last breath, where my soul is going is important. Yes. Man, and that's so, so good. Yeah. So good. What an awesome way to end. I wish we didn't have to say goodbye. I know. Uh, if you would like to get a hold of Storm, you can find us at storminc.org. Or you can call our office number 405-503-7442 or find us on Facebook as well. That's right. Thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, check out Brian's show this Friday from 1230 to 130. And then tune in next week. Um, I don't remember who's on. But remember there's no chemical solution to a spiritual problem.